prophecy um, that God gives to Ezekiel. And he's talking about his people, his nation. And whenever he does that, us in the church age, we can, we can count ourselves as God's people. If we're believers in Jesus, by grace through faith in Jesus, we've been saved. We're adopted sons and daughters of the Most High Living God. So, so that's us. We're God's people. And God cares for his people. Um, God is jealous for his people. God wants the best for his people. Um, and, and even in seasons of life where his people have rejected him and turned their back on him and, and continually grumbled and groaned and whined and, and turned away, God still loves his people and cares for his people. And he wants something more for his people than his people even want for themselves. There are countless times in the Old Testament where God's people settle for less. They just settle for less. They're even striving for less. They're like, God, why would you take us out of slavery into the wilderness where we're wandering around? Can't we just go back? Can't we just be enslaved to the Egyptians again? That's all we want. At least we had a three square meals a day. I mean, they want less for themselves. They want slavery for themselves instead of freedom and a promised land that God wants for them. So in this prophecy, God is talking to his, his, his prophet Ezekiel, and he's speaking about this valley of dry bones, this valley of very dry bones that were just, I mean, in, a, in random, mixed shape and proportion just in this valley. And, and God points out to Ezekiel, he says, hey, you see that? And he's like, yes, these are bones, they're very dry. And he said, prophesy to the bones and tell them to, to come together. So then he hears this rattling and the bones start coming together, bone to bone, tendons are attaching, skin forms, and they're standing there. This valley of dry bones is now standing there as a... Well, what seems to be a team, what seems to be a vast army, but the one problem is, is that they do not have breath. And when they don't have breath, they don't have life. And when they don't have life, it's just silhouettes, it's just structures, it's just shapes that are there before Ezekiel. So God then says, prophesy to the breath. And when he does, the Spirit of God fills these dry bones, and this vast army is standing there alive and ready to do what God has for them. I went to the uh, Clippers Mavericks game last night, and you see the Clippers, and they're stacked, and the Mavs have been trying to piece a team together since 2011 when they won it, and haven't done that successfully yet. But, but you see the Clippers team, and you see the big name guys that they have on their roster, you see their bench, when their bench comes in and it's big name guys, yeah, Paul Pierce might be a little bit out of his prime, but he, you know, there's guys on their roster, their structures, their shapes, their bodies that have uniforms and they're on the court. But unless that unit has life, then they are worthless. The Mavs on the other side, they didn't have that much of an army. They had a couple big name guys and some young guys that are trying to prove themselves and some guys that are trying to build chemistry as a team. But what they had last night in that game is they had life. They had a spirit in them. They had a purpose in them that was driving them to accomplish more for them than what was driving the Clippers team. It was a great game, but it was a great example for me to see a team take the court that has all of the metrics, all of the size, all of the speed, all of the talent that they need but unless life is breathed into them, then they're just figures. And when you've got a team that comes together, standing there in a vast army, I believe it says in verse 10 or 11, that there they stood after the breath of the Spirit was breathed into them, then those bones, those tendons and ligaments, those muscles, that army had something to do, and they were able to accomplish the purpose that was set forth for them. When God sends us into battle, he doesn't send us in empty-handed. Another one of my favorite scriptures is in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, where it talks about putting on the full armor of God. 
And I want to challenge you guys in all of these different areas, so pay attention. Paul gives his readers a, a challenge, and, and he says that the battle isn't just against flesh and blood, but against spiritual powers of evil in heaven and realm. So this is not just about football today. This is not just about the equipment that you wear for football, for the practice, for the game tomorrow night. This, this is about life, equipping for life, and it will serve you well in football also. But the first thing he says is, at the core of you, at the center of you, he says, stand firm, stand firm. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You have a battle before you. It's against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Stand firm. And after you've stood firm, stand firm in this. And then he commissions with the belt of truth buckled at your waist. At the core of you, at the center of you, is truth. If you guys are, are hanging on to something that's not truth, something that's counterfeit, something that's fal false, something that's just imaginary, there's no way you're going to have your core secured if you're building your foundation off something that is shifting, right? Truth is solid. Truth is a rock. Truth, that's at the core of you, the center of you, with a belt of truth. Then it goes on to the breastplate of righteousness, okay? These are the, this is the thing that's protecting your vitals. This is righteousness. This is how you play the game. This is how you live. This is the upstanding nature of your character. This is very important to you because if that gets penetrated, then your efficacy is compromised. Next, he says, your feet are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And I love this one because in the armor of God that we're talking about, a lot of this stuff is clear defense, right, on your vitals. It's the core of you. You've got the breastplate. In a second, we'll talk about the helmet of salvation. But this one talks about your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And what that tells me is that in the battlefield, when you're talking about armor, you don't have to fight every single battle that's in front of you. I had a, uh, there's a saying by Dr. Tucson down at DTS. He taught at DTS for 50 years, and um, he's 84, just a spiritual giant. He said this, don't get in a fight with a chimney sweep, because you're going to get dirty. And anytime you tug on Superman's cape. Anytime you get into it, like you're like, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to face this tempting situation, but I'm going to attack it, you know? Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't even go to the temptation. Having your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace means get out of there. From a secure place of peace, know that you don't have to take every battle that's in front of you because some of them are going to be, uh, well, below reproach. Some of them are going to be things that you don't need to, you don't need to pick that fight. Uh, we had this, this theme on our team when I was in college, and we always had each other's back. It was this us against the world theme, and that's when we were underdogs, you know, and no one, the ref didn't have our back, not that we needed it, but the, you know, everyone but our unit, it seemed, was against us. So we, we pulled together, and that, that went beyond the football field, beyond the locker room, in the classroom, in social settings, and whatnot. And, uh, and I got a call one night. I, I didn't drink in college. I never, I never saw the value in drinking. Um, I just saw it hurt people and wreck people's lives. Uh, so when I was in college, I was, I was driving my drunk teammates around. We had this thing called Malt Liquor Wednesday, ML Dub. And we weren't allowed in the bars during the season, but they took, that didn't stop them every other night of the week to have an excuse to get together and drink. So my teammates got in a lot of trouble, and I was frequently bailing my guys out, frequently, you know, because I put myself out there for it. I'm like, please don't do anything stupid. I mean, you're already doing something stupid, but please don't do something more stupid that's going to hurt just more than just you. And so I'm like, call me if you guys need a ride, and call me when you guys need me. And everyone knew that that's what Tex was going to do, right? That was my nickname in college. Sorry about that. But um, So I get a call one night from Nathan Easton saying, you know, he's just, he, the second I pick up the phone, he's like just yelling and just all this stuff. And he's like completely intense. So you, so you got to come over here and help me kick their butts. Use a different word. And so, um, and I'm like, Nate, shut up. You don't need to do that. I'm not going to come help you. I thought you had my back. I thought it's us against the world. I thought we were going to, hey, man, we, don't, we don't need to do that. You don't need to go in there. That's not a battle that you need to fight right now. And in life, there'll be plenty of battles that you don't need to fight. Understand, come from a secure place of peace. Know that a part of the full armor of God, you don't have to blindly go into everything that's in front of you. Be smart. Be sophisticated. Be 
strategic with where you go. And know that when you need to get out, a part of your armor is your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So we've got feet, we've got a belt of truth, we've got a breastplate of righteousness, we've got a helmet of salvation. Now here is the most important part of your equipment, the most important part of your armor. Because what we know to be true about salvation by grace through faith in Jesus is this, is that once you have that, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Neither height nor depth nor angels nor demons, the past, present, future, nor any principalities, nothing you can imagine can separate you from the love of God once you are in that right relationship. So that helmet is always in place. But just because that helmet is always in place, that doesn't mean that you can lay down the rest of your gear and just walk out in the battlefield, saunter out into the battlefield where there's like flaming arrows going by and people with swords trying to cut you down. Like, hey, I've got my salvation, so I'm good to go. I don't really care about truth. I don't really need much righteousness in my life. I don't need the shield of faith to extinguish those flaming arrows. That's not the way to a victorious life. Yes, you will always have that salvation. But no, that's not an excuse for you to be completely careless as you go about uh, your war, okay? So then we've got uh, the shield of faith, which I mentioned, which extinguishes the flaming arrows. And the only offensive weapon in the full armor of God is the sword of the Spirit. And this is the word of God. This is the truth of God. God, know that so that you can advance. Know that so you can properly defend yourself. And that's what Jesus does. After Jesus was baptized, he went into the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights where he was tempted by the devil himself. And every time, the three times that Satan tempted him, three times he tempted him, and three times Jesus responded with the truth of the gospel, with scripture itself that he had memorized in his mind. That's the sword of the spirit. So when you guys go out tomorrow night, as we take this into a completely football world, understand that you have the full armor of God. And that, that, that parallels to, like I said, life is, is an archetype for a greater truth that is our life everlasting with God. The things that are true of us spiritually, we get to play out physically. You guys get to do that tomorrow night. So understand this, that you've got the belt of truth buckled in you. At the core of you are things that are true. Your coaches love you and care about you. Your coaches want to win. Your teammates hopefully love you and care about you. And teammates hopefully want to win, right? What are the other things that are true in you? If I do my assignment on these plays, it's going to help my team win. Other things that are true of your team, just lock that in at the core of you. The breastplate of you is righteousness. This is you not being careless. This is you not being flippant with your regard to your team. The sanctity of the team. There's a responsibility that you have on you as an individual when it comes to the, the overall righteousness of your team. Take that into the fight with you. Feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. I don't really know how to translate this to football because I think you could, it could be a, an athletic thing. I, I think it means run fast, maybe, all right? Um, because you're going to pick a lot of battles. But don't pick the battles that you don't need to pick. After the whistle, outside of the rules of the game, things like that. There's not battles that you need to pick there. I know the receivers get down and dirty with the, the, the DBs all game long when you guys are blocking, y'all are jawing at each other and doing these things. Keep your mind right. Transcend the things that will bring you down and distract you. Those aren't battles that you necessarily need to fight. Dominate him every play, yes. Dominate your opponent every play, but don't pick the battles that you don't need to fight and to do. Your helmet of salvation, being confident in who you are and your identity, on and off the field. That comes with you. That doesn't change no matter what the playing field is. Your shield of faith, which extinguishes the flaming arrows of the evil one. Um, when you think about defense and, and guarding your body, understand those things, but that's also a mental thing. Okay? Defend your mind against disappointment. If things aren't going your way, if the ball isn't bouncing your way, if, if, the, if the refs aren't giving you calls that you think are fair. Don't let that stuff get you down. Extinguish the flaming arrows of negativity and pessimism and choose to believe something true and positive. Like I was talking about last week, every play is an opportunity for you guys to do something great. You're never down. You're never out. You're always ready. Keep that proper mindset and shield off, fend off anything that, that, that speaks to the contrary. And then the sword of truth, advance, offense. Understand that you have at your fingertips the ability to do something great, something powerful. 
and something that looks like glory. You guys have that in your hands. You have that by carrying out your responsibility. You have that uh, opportunity on this team. All right. I think I'm good on time. Um, but uh, let me just close out by reminding you of who you guys are. You guys are a vast army. You're going to be that. As you take the field tomorrow, you're going to be a vast army. My question to you is this. Do you have the spirit? You have the spirit of God, the spirit of life breathed into you that gives you purpose. And it makes everything that you guys do worth it. Or are you just going through the motions? Are you just showing up because you're part of the football team and that's where the football team is on Friday night? Do you have that purpose? Do you have the spirit of God inside of you? And that's a question for off the football field as well. Because you can just go through the motions of life without purpose. And that is a shame. People do it all the time. So ask yourself the question, do I have the spirit of God inside of me? Do I use that for my benefit on the field? Am I using that for my benefit off the field? Am I using it for the glory of God? My hope is that you And understand that you've been equipped, just like you're equipped to take the field, you're equipped to take life as well. And I want to, uh, to challenge you guys to take an inventory. What's your armor look like? He talked about the shield of faith. I don't think I have that. I'm discouraged frequently when someone says this or when th this thing gets me down here. Ah, he's talking about truth and, and stuff not shifting. Is there not relativity that exists? I mean, can we speak about absolutes? He keeps referencing the Bible. That's like a document that's been around for 2,000 years. Is that, is, is that really the truth? Ask yourself those questions. Take the inventory. Uh, and one thing I was talking to Cohen earlier, one thing um, that, we're do, that we do every Thursday night, and we're doing it tonight as well, if you guys want to have an opportunity to hear more truth of the Bible and have an opportunity to worship, uh, I, I help out with FCA here at Lake Highlands, and it's actually held at my house across the street, and I want to personally invite you guys to come to that every Thursday night at 7 o'clock. If your coach doesn't give you a curfew that will, you know, that won't, you know, prevent you from going. They got in bed by nine. In bed by nine? Okay, that's good. Bulk of our time, we'll, we'll be done pretty much at 8.30, and I live in Lake Highland, so y'all can get home and in bed, brush your teeth, brush, brush your tooth, and then uh, get in bed by nine. But if you guys want to, it's a great time of, of introspection, a great time of reflection, a great time to take an inventory, a great time to invite the spirit into your person. So I want to invite you guys to do that if that's something you want to do every Thursday night. I live right across that cul-de-sac in the tennis courts, 10,000. If you need my address, talk to Cohen about it or ask me about it. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, but if you don't do that there, do it somewhere. Take an inventory. See who you are. And, and know who you are. In God's eyes, by grace and faith in Jesus, we are adopted sons of the most high living God. That changes things. And that right there means that the spirit is inside of us, which means we have purpose in life, and you guys have purpose on the field tomorrow night. Quick prayer, then we're done. Father God, thank you for this group. Thank you for your spirit, spirit which is alive in us, giving us purpose. I pray that when we dig down deep tomorrow night that we will find something greater than ourselves, that we will find you. And as we stand, there's a vast army with the spirit in us. I pray that we would have unity in this body of believers, unity on this team, that we could accomplish something great because you have a great purpose for us to accomplish in this life and on that field tomorrow night. You've equipped us with armor and that we would use that, that we wouldn't just lay down the armor, that we would take it up, that we would stand firm and that we would be strong in you, our great and awesome God, and the power of your might. I pray these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.